In this video, we'll be starting our discussion on infinite series. So let's go over first what the definition of the um, infinite series is. When we're talking about an infinite series, we mean a sum of infinitely many terms. Remember, a sequence was a list or an ordered list of infinitely many terms. So we can think of our series as adding up all of the terms that might have been in a sequence. Notationally, when we're writing down our um, infinite series, we'll have the sum notation here, capital um, Greek letter sigma, starting from some index, let's say n equals 1, up to infinity of something that's in terms of n. We'll call it a sub n for now. So this means we're going to add a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3, etc. Okay. So let's look at some examples of infinite series and try to make sense of what it means to talk about the sum of infinitely many terms. So we said that the big idea we're interested in with um, both sequences and series is a question of convergence. So how are we going to be able to make sense of this idea of adding up infinitely many things and trying to determine whether that sum is converging to something or not. Okay, so let's look at a few examples just to get us started. So here I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, etc. Here this is thinking about adding up all of our positive integers. Notice that notationally I could express this as a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n. I could also use other letters for the index and it would be equal to the same um, sum. So I could say i equals 1 to infinity of i, or we could say the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k. Those would all be the same thing. So the big idea in thinking about our sum of infinitely many terms is to turn it into a sum of finite terms by thinking about just part of the sum at a time. So when we talk about thinking about part of the sum, we call that partial sums. So let's see what I mean by that in this example. You can also think of partial sums as cumulative sums. Okay, how is the sum changing as I add additional terms? So initially, here I have 1, then I add another term and I have 1 plus 2, then I have 1 plus 2 plus 3, then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc. Okay. So in terms of how my um, partial sums are changing, it's 1, and then 3, and then 6, and then 10. So it looks like as I'm adding additional terms, or one, one more um, term each time to my sum, um, the sum is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we have this idea in this example that our partial sums keep getting bigger. Okay, so we haven't gone into the full theory of our definition of series convergence yet, but we have this idea that this should be a divergent series because as I add additional terms, I'm getting a bigger and bigger sum. Okay, so let's look at another example. Here I've got a repeating decimal. So I have 0.3 repeating. So this should be something familiar here. We actually know that 0.3 repeating is the number one third. Okay, so how is this connected to an infinite series? Well, we can look at this 0.3 repeating as being 0.3 plus 0.03 plus 0.003. etc. here plus 0.0003. Okay, so I do have an infinite sum that's actually creating that 0 0.3 repeating, which we know to be equal to a finite number of one third. So if we think about this in terms of the, the partial sums, I have 0 0.3 and then 0 0.33 and then 0.333, etc. here. So I can see that my partial sums as I add additional terms are getting closer 
to that value of one third. Okay, so we see a couple examples here so far. We have a, an example of a series that it looks like diverges, an example of a series that it looks like converges. Again, without getting into the full theory quite yet. Okay, let's look at one final example, going over this idea again. So here I have one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, etc. Okay, as my um, example of an infinite series. There's actually an, um, a story associated with this particular um, infinite series here that comes from something called Zeno's Paradox. And one variation of Zeno's Paradox shows that this sum arises by trying to figure out um, how long it's going to take you to get to a wall if I have to walk half of the distance first and then half of the remaining distance and then half of that remaining distance and then half of that remaining distance etc. So the argument goes that I'll never reach the wall because I only have to um, walk half of what I have left, half of the remaining distance. So I get this infinite sum of things along but we know that there's only a finite distance between this person and the wall. So we have the, this paradox of, of um, adding these infinitely many things and yet it seems like I should eventually reach the wall here. So this sort of um, complicated idea of infinity um, is what troubled a lot of the, the early Greek um, philosophers and mathematicians. And so we're going to look at making some more sense of this um, particular infinite series here. In terms of partial sums, I have one half and then one half plus a fourth and then one half plus a fourth plus an eighth, okay, et cetera. So what's happening to my partial sums? Well, I have one half, and then three fourths, and then seven eighths. Okay, so it looks like those sums, as I add additional values, might be getting closer and closer to some number. Let's just look at one other geometric expression of this particular infinite series. If I think about a box that's um, unit one by unit one, I can think about finding the area of this box by taking half of the area, so that's my one half, and then I could take half of the remaining area, so that adds a quarter, half of the remaining area, which adds an eighth, half of the remaining area, which adds a sixteenth, half of the remaining area, which adds a thirty-second. We could just keep going like this, okay? And we see, because I'm filling in this box, I can't be getting an infinite sum out of all of those quantities. Okay, so it looks like we'll be getting closer to an area or a sum of one here. Okay, so this gives us a few ideas, a few examples for thinking about our infinite series. Um, continue watching the videos to see some more of the theory behind determining convergence of a series.